you guys remember um, last time? It was a couple weeks ago when we were looking, started looking at Culture Lies. You guys remember? A little bit? Okay. So basically, we look, we're look. we going to be looking at one um, one like phrase or whatever that people say to each other in our culture and kind of looking at it from a biblical perspective. So uh, one that we hear quite frequently is you are worthy. And uh, I actually see non-Christians and Christians use this one a lot alike. People, it's not really something that's just in the culture. It's something that's in the church too. Oh, I am worthy. And, uh, well, let's just, let's let's see what the Bible says. Romans 5, 8 says this. Excuse me, I don't know why I did that. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we were not worthy, God died for us. So now that God died for us, now we're worthy. No, not at all. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 6.23. Nothing has changed with um, our level to become perfect on ourselves. It's We are saved by faith, by grace through faith, and we continue in the faith by that grace. So uh, there's a few issues with, with, with the statement, you are worthy. And, and the first one, I think, is one of clarity. You are worthy, or I am worthy. Of what? That's that's kind of kind of the thing is because in certain contexts this could kind of be true in a way, and so I think the biggest problem with how our culture and how the church uses it is just a lack of clarity. You know, I think what they mean to say is I'm loved, and I'm loved is a lot different more you know, is a lot different than, from I'm worthy. So you know, a lot of the time when people say you are worthy, they mean something different. And what they mean is they use it as a response to very insecure people. So those people are struggling with whatever. Maybe they have severe, um, you know, self-esteem issues. Uh, maybe they're suicidal. Maybe, you know, whatever. And then they say, you are worthy. And they just drop it in there. And it's meant to be an encouragement, but it's just unclear. And I don't know about you, but I can't really get encouraged from things that aren't clear. Like, what do you mean I am worthy? Worthy of what? To do what? Like, what do you mean I am worthy? Um, and so a lot of times people think, oh, I'm just a waste of space. I don't deserve your time. I'm lower than, lower than, I'm lower than worms. You know, I'm, 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 you know, so much less than some other person. And, um, in that context, obviously the issue is that the person has severe, uh, self-esteem issues. So obviously for that kind of a situation, you know, yeah, if you have that low of self-esteem, like you should probably do something about that. But the problem is that you are worthy isn't going to help somebody with low self-esteem. Like, especially over a long term, it might encourage them for a moment, but it doesn't really give them anything solid to form their self-esteem on. I don't have low self low self-esteem because I know what the Bible says about me, and I know my worth from God's perspective. Not from my actions, not from what other people think of me, not from what I think of me, but from what God thinks of me. So, you know, with that, yeah, I need to have a good self-esteem, but you are worthy isn't going to do that. Um, we did nothing to deserve salvation, but also we did nothing to deserve our life in general. We were all born whether we wanted to be born or not, and that's just it. I mean, if you don't like your life, not really much you can do about it. Like, you didn't choose to be born, you didn't, none of that. Um, so, you know, obviously you couldn't do anything to be born because, you know, you weren't born yet. Like, you can't do anything to pressure God into bringing you into existence. And uh, so, I mean, you could say from one perspective, you are worthy to have rights in the state of, in the United States. You are worthy to have, you know, civil rights, the right to vote and that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think that that's really what people mean <laughs> when they say so, to somebody who's, who's depressed, hey, you're worthy to vote. <laughs> I really don't think that's what they mean. So, you know, I when I, when I was when I was severely depressed, I remember I used to tell myself this um, from time to time. Uh, and I really hated myself, and I hated my life, and, you know, I, I, I was very insecure. Uh, and I used to tell myself, hey, you know, you are worthy. But then after time, in, in time, I, I stopped, and I just thought, what does that even mean? And I found a lot better answers for my self-esteem than you are worthy. And I, I noticed that as I grew, I became less self-absorbed. And as I became less self-absorbed, I am worthy really didn't do anything because it was it was all about me. It's like I my life doesn't revolve around me. Like it didn't really it wasn't really helping anymore. Um, you know I don't need to worship myself. I need to get answers from the Bible. So whatever whatever specific issues I was going through, oh what's my purpose in life? All these different things. 
the Bible had answers for those things, but you are worthy wasn't one that really helped. And um, so now I want to go through these things, and, and it kind of points out um, kind of what I'm talking about. These questions are not for you to answer. They're just for you to think about. The first question, does inflating your ego build security? I think that's the biggest problem with the statement of you are worthy. This person is obviously having emotional issues, maybe mental issues. So, hey, you are worthy. And it's like, okay. Are, it, it doesn't. It's not well defined, and it seems like it's just building up ego. I would say, no, you don't need to inflate your ego to, help, to be a secure person. Like, you can see people who are real um, conceited and prideful and arrogant, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're secure. In fact, most of the times, they're the most insecure of all people. You know, it's the people who don't need to prove themselves that really are the most secure. And um, they don't sit around, you know, looking at themselves and saying, no, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. Like, you, they just don't really need that. So I would say, no, you don't need to inflate the ego to build your security. Um, and, and another reason why I don't think so is because what happens when in, when it inevitably deflates? Like, maybe your ego is built on your, your looks. Well, you'll eventually lose your looks. Um, I remember there was one woman who... You know, she's like, no, no, I don't have a problem, I don't have a problem. And I told her, you know, one day you're not going to be pretty anymore. And she got genuinely mad at me. And I was like, you realize we all age and we all get ugly. I mean, look at me. I'm at the time I was in my 20s. I said, now look at me. I'm in my 20s. It's already down now. Like, how much time do you think you have? Um, sometimes we, we, we build our ego on our money. Oh, I have enough money. You know, people really like me. Eventually you won't have money. I mean, it's just a matter of time. Uh, sometimes we build it on friends. Friends are really a temporary commodity. Um, they're great and they are necessary, but don't think that you'll, your friends will always be there for you because they won't. Um, Pro Proverbs tells us that pride comes before a fall. So if we're inflating our ego to build security, that's just a ticking time bomb waiting to happen. Eventually, that's going to completely fall apart. Um, and also, uh, building our ego does nothing but really makes us more entitled. And I think we've all known people who are entitled. That's not something that's, that's a good thing. Um, do we deserve love? And if so, why? Now, this is a question I really, really, really struggle with. I don't know if we deserve love. I don't know. Um, you know, it, it's like this. When I when I was in college, there, people had this idea that if you wanted, if you needed, um, you shouldn't have to ask for people to help you if you're depressed. People should just always be checking in with you. And that's just stupid. Like, you have to tie yourself into people. You have to talk to people. You can't just expect them to read your minds. So that, that that's totally wrong. Um, and, and then the whole, do you deserve love? Well, why does my neighbor, for instance, over there, why do they have to love me for no reason? Like, especially if they're not in Christ, if they're not a Christian. Well, I can't really think of any good reason. Um, did did Adolf Hitler deserve love? You know, it's, it's, it's a hard question. I don't know. Can you only, and, and I want you guys to think about these these questions, you know, on your own. Not, I'm just giving my answers, but... I want you to think for for your own answers too. Um, can you only have that which you are worthy of? Well, I would say no because grace is undeserved. Our lives are undeserved. What we have inherited from like dead aunts and dead relatives, that's undeserved. And we didn't deserve those things. And so can you only have the, that which you are worthy? No. So why does it matter if you are worthy? Like that it's kind of an irrelevant point to give to somebody. Do we have to deserve it to matter? Do we have to deserve anything to matter? <sighs> I don't think so. We matter to God even though we aren't worthy. We matter because he loves us and made us and saved us. None of which we deserved. We didn't deserve for him to do any of those things. So do we have to deserve to matter? No, I don't think so. I think that's just something that we tell ourselves so that we can sleep better at night. Does I don't deserve it, does saying the statement, I don't deserve it, oh, I'm so unworthy, I don't deserve it, from, from having low self-esteem mean it's wrong? Or is it the attitude itself and not the words that's wrong? Well, I think it's the attitude that's wrong. Believing I don't matter, that's something that I don't know what God's word says. Or saying I do matter because of my own opinion or because of the opinions of others, that doesn't that doesn't really hold up to weight because your opinion of you is going to change and other people's opinion of you is going to change. That would mean that you're you only have value as long as people think you have value. That 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 wouldn't be very good. Um, or you know, do I have security in who God made me to be? 
And I think that that's a lot better of an option, you know, because when when we're kids, we think that our life is going to be high to high. Like we're going to do all these things. We're going to have all these achievements, you know, like on a video game or something. Where we're going to, you know, save the world or something. But a lot of the world, a lot of our lives is just spent on kind of mundane things. And that's okay. Like that's fine. It doesn't have to be, you know, living from high to high. Um, it It's one of those things where God made us special even if we don't reach this supposed potential that somebody thinks we should. Um, and I think we give ourselves lies that make us feel better, like you are worthy, even though we don't really know what that means, because in our human thinking, we think that our value as a person comes from either things we do, our accomplishments in life, um, our titles, what people call us as, you know, uh, I have a doctorate's degree or, you know, whatever. Um, our uh, maybe opinions of people like, oh, you know, that guy, he really has his crap together. Or maybe um, feelings, you know, oh, how I feel about something. Uh, so we try throughout our life to try and prove ourselves. And I think that's why You Are Worthy has such a such an impact for us. But really, at the heart of it, it's a hollow encouragement that doesn't really stand up to the test of time. So the solution to this, to this um, societal issue is not to continue to affirm ourselves oh i am so worthy it's rather to notice god's worthiness this is from the book of revelation it says who is worthy no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able the root of david he is able the root of david being Je being jesus so instead of comforting yourself with pride i am worthy Instead, glorify God and glorify in who God is and who he has made you to be and learn. You know, go, don't go to it with, oh, you know, I'm such a worm. But instead, God, what can you teach me? Well, you know, how, you know, grow my character and that kind of stuff. And you start to notice that as you become less self-absorbed, people think that because they loathe, loathe themselves, hate themselves, that that means they're not self-absorbed. No, if you hate yourself, that's a sign that you're self-absorbed. Not everybody who's self-absorbed thinks that they're the greatest thing in the world. That's just totally wrong. Um, so, yes, you are not worthy. However, Christ is. And as we rest in who God is, it gives us security. But as we try to build our own ego, it makes us only more secure, although it feels better at the time. So, um, we'll look at more culturalized next week.